video, I'm going to show you how to get a sine wave output from the ARP Odyssey. And I'm, I'm talking about an, an audio output because we do have a sine wave. It's the low frequency oscillator, but that's only used as a modulation source. What if you want a sine wave in the audio waveform? Well, the Odyssey has two oscillators and those two oscillators can produce either a sawtooth wave or a square wave. Now, the big brother to the Odyssey, the, uh, the 2600, did have a sine wave output, but we don't have it on the Odyssey, and that's okay, because in classic subtractive synthesis, you start with a complex waveform, and then kind of take elements out, filter things out to a, a simpler sound. That's what we mean by subtractive synthesis. The sawtooth wave and the square wave are complex harmonically. The sine wave is just, a, a, it has no harmonics. It's just a pure waveform. So you don't get a lot from filtering a, a sine wave. It just, you just kind of make it quieter. But let's listen to what the sound of the uh, first, the sawtooth wave sounds like. And now let's listen to the square wave. You can hear the square wave has a slightly mellower sound and I modulated the width of the square wave as the width of the square wave gets uh, more narrow, it gets a slightly thinner sound. So those are the two waveforms that we always have to work with, the square wave and the sawtooth wave. But what if we want to make a sine wave? Well, we can do that not with oscillator one and oscillator two, but with a filter by pushing the filter into self oscillation. So we do that by turning the resonance all the way up to the top, and I'm going to set the filter frequency at about halfway. So when we increase the resonance in the, of the filter, what we're doing is we're actually taking a little bit of the output from the filter and feeding it back into the input of the filter, sort of like a little feedback loop. And that creates that emphasis that we hear in, when we add resonance to uh, um, the, the uh, filter. And in fact, the early uh, Moog synths called this emphasis. So if I turn my resonance all the way up to the top and I'm going to put my um, um, filter cutoff like kind of right here in the middle, let's, let's listen to what that sounds like. So that's that classic sine wave that you've heard a whole lot. Now, uh, that was pretty easy to do. One problem we have right now is I, I don't actually have a way to play this musically. It's not going to track what I play on the keyboard. Regardless of what key I play on the keyboard, it's always going to be the same pitch. So we solve this problem by turning up in the voltage controlled filter uh, modulation. We're going to turn up keyboard tracking and we're going to put it all the way to the top. We're going to push this fader all the way to the top. And when we do that, then the filter, the pitch of the filter will track what key I'm playing on the keyboard. Now the, the problem uh, with this, just like with oscillator one and oscillator two, is I'm really not sure what that pitch is. So I, when I'm working with these analog synthesizers, I always keep my, my handy tuner around just to make sure that that's quite in tune. And I, I do this with oscillator one and oscillator two as well. So let's just check this. So this should be a G. It's coming in as A sharp. Okay, that, that looks pretty solid. So now, let's see. And now we have that distinctive sound of a sine wave. If we want to add some modulation in the voltage controlled filter section, I've got LFO selected, and we can just add in a little bit of the LFO. And because it's tracking the keyboard, things like portamento also work. Woo! 
So this is a great way to add another waveform uh, to the ARP Odyssey that may not already uh, be included. And sometimes, uh, you know, the sine wave is just the sound that you're looking for. It kind of has sort of a whistly, uh, hollow sound. Let's listen to that up a little bit in pitch.